I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my life living in Nicaragua. Today, I want to talk about the general skills and power that comes with deciding you're going to relocate and become an expat. In a recent conversation, someone said, why do you refer to yourself as an expat when you're just an immigrant? It's not quite that simple. There's actually a differentiation here, but not one that people normally think about. And there's a huge number of people that we often refer to as immigrants that are also expats. All expats are immigrants, but not all immigrants are expats. So there's a power in being an expat and one that you may want to really think about because it alone could be a good reason for why you want to be one. Let's find out what that is right after the bump. When it comes to moving abroad, leaving your home country and moving on to a new one, most people have a tendency to think about the negatives. Of course, you're going to think about some positives. That's what drives you to do it in the first place, whether it's lower cost of living or a higher degree of safety or possibly just great weather and being able to sit on the beach all day. Something is driving you to move abroad. But beyond that, we have a tendency to focus very much on the negatives. The fear starts to grip us and we say, well, we're going to give up our home country. What things do we lose and how are we going to be limited by the new place that we're moving to? And those fears may be founded, but are they really true? And more importantly, do they hold up when we compare them to all the benefits? Now, I'm going to use where I live in Nicaragua and where I came from in the United States as an example, because this is a great situation where a lot of people look at the negatives and don't realize the big picture of how it affects most of us in real life. Of course, every person moving has a different place that they're coming from, a different place that they're going to, and a different way that they need to interact with those places. So your mileage will vary, but I know a lot of people who do this, and there are some commonalities that we see across lots and lots of people. So let's take an example. When you're moving to Nicaragua, well, a lot of people are going to point out, well, you're giving up the ability to use Amazon in the United States. And that is absolutely true. You can't use Amazon in Nicaragua in the same way that you used it in the United States. They do not ship directly to Nicaragua. So a lot of people write this off as you can't ship on Amazon to Nicaragua. And it's not quite that simple. You see, there are services in the United States that allow you to ship from Amazon directly to them, and they will ship to Nicaragua. Of course, this causes delay and higher costs but it doesn't completely knock out the ability to use Amazon. It just changes it a little bit. And a lot of people travel back to their home country, in my case, the United States, from time to time. And you're able to, in many cases, do your shopping on Amazon, have it, have it sent to a friend or family member, or maybe a storage unit of your own, or a holding space somewhere that maybe even Amazon provides. And you can stop by and pick it up and then bring it back with you when you travel back. Or as I often do, I have friends who go back to the United States. A great example is Alan, who's on the show from time to time. And we mention a lot, he was just in the United States a week ago, and he came back with a new audio recorder for me. Very simple in many cases to find ways to work around uh, that particular challenge of shopping with Amazon. We're not really as limited as it seems. It's not like you don't normally have some connection back to your home country. You actually have a much more global experience than most people. And we just had a recent video where we talked about global thinking and how giving yourself a new context allows you to tackle some of these problems more broadly. And this is a great extension of that conversation where by looking at the region, by looking at your global options, by being more flexible, thinking outside the box, another episode we had recently, you can often tackle the things that you want to do, being able to shop at good prices and conveniently, and possibly actually do better than you were able to do originally. Now, it's very difficult to compete with the likes of Amazon shipping and living in the United States when it comes to shopping. But when you combine all the ways that you can use Amazon to get products in the US, the local shopping that does exist in Nicaragua, the better ability that we have here to order products from, say, China, for example, the broader availability of products, the lower tariffs and the more flexible import rules, the ability to simply cross the border into Costa Rica and do our shopping there, our ability to cross the border into Honduras or El Salvador or Guatemala do our shopping there or even to fly to Panama where the selection is pretty incredible. Suddenly you start realizing that what is available in the region is much bigger than you think. In so many cases, the way that things work is simply by looking at the bigger picture and being more flexible in how we approach it. We mentioned extensively the healthcare situation. If you are here in Nicaragua, people will think 
normally. Well, my healthcare options are limited, even if they are free or low cost and very good, they're still relatively limited. And that's kind of true. But we also have very easy access to many countries worth of healthcare, both directly nearby and within the greater region that are close enough to consider easy travel to. Once you're an expat, you have a lot of flexibility in everything. Now, these things are just normal day to day tasks. So hopefully your healthcare items are not, but realistically, it's something you have to think about day to day. But let's think about things much more broadly, because sometimes what people are really panicking about is not little things like shopping. They understand that they can adjust to that. They understand that shopping is not the end all of life. It doesn't tend to make someone afraid if they're not able to do really great shopping. So what about political situations? And I don't mean politics of the local country. I mean the general political picture, meaning you want to be under a different polity. You want to be in a different country. You decide you don't like the place that you're in. You have some problems with your visa for some reason. A common one that people talk about is in Mexico recently, they had some changes of their tourist visa. And people who had a long-term plan for staying in Mexico generally are fine. I don't want to spread any panic. I've uh, watch some videos of people who know pretty well and they're like, yes, they've changed some rules, but it's not as bad as people sound. It's all, you know, doom and gloom. But when you actually uh, look and talk to immigration, wow, the flies are just terrible today, um, you, that you discover they, they just worked on my lawn. So all the insects are stirred up and they're all coming around my head. Um, that uh, they'll work with you and they generally have paths to allow you to stay in Mexico for most people. But it doesn't change the fact that people are afraid of this happening, that it can happen, and you need to be prepared for it. But when you live in your original country, life is all you're trapped and you have to do what your government says. But when you live in Mexico as an expat, for example, and Mexico makes some changes that causes a situation where you need to reconsider living in Mexico, you need to look more broadly, you need to uh, get out or just look at your options, you have those options. As an expat under normal circumstances, you can simply pack up and move on to a different country. I understand that that's not ideal and that's not something you want to be your answer if you've made a home in Mexico and you just love it in Mexico, you certainly don't want to have to move on to another place. But at some point, your home country didn't meet your needs and you chose Mexico as a place to move on to. You have the same tuning options in your life continuously. So if Mexico changes and maybe it just becomes more expensive, maybe they drop some features that you like, their healthcare is no longer meeting your needs, you have the ability to do exactly what you did before when moving to Mexico, but you don't have to expat again. You're not leaving your home country again, you're leaving your, your host country again. So in this case, you could just pack up your stuff and move on to, let's just say the neighboring country of Guatemala, which has a lower cost of living and is a little bit more welcoming than Mexico. Mexico is very welcoming and a wonderful choice. I'm not trying it anyway to disparage it, just using it as an example here. But if you were suddenly unable to live in Mexico, it is as simple as driving on to Guatemala. Once in Guatemala, you can decide if that's a place you want to be. If it meets your needs, great. If you decide it's not a good tuning for you, you can move on to El Salvador or possibly Nicaragua as great options right nearby. This is one of those things that people really don't tend to think about once you become an expat and you are a citizen of the world, really, you have this incredibly easy ability to simply pack and go. Your options of where to live are not limited to a single country under normal circumstances. When you're coming from your host country, when you grow up, you think of the world as confined by the country that you grew up in. Maybe not if you're European, but definitely if you're North American or Australian, for example, your boundaries of your country are really hard boundaries for you to think beyond the walls of. But when you become an expat and you're living around the world, most of us who are expats, meaning we have no intention of returning to our home country, right? An immigrant is a reference to what your status is in your host country. So for me in Nicaragua, I am an immigrant. Nicaragua sees me as an immigrant, but the United States sees me as an expat. My status as an expat is a permanent one. I am always an expat and I am an expat to all people. But my immigration status is unique to Nicaragua. In Nicaragua, I am an immigrant, but in the United States, I am not an immigrant. So it depends where you are, whether you use the term immigrant, and it depends on the context you're speaking in. If you're talking about the challenges that come with living in a new country, you would often refer to that as an immigration problem or problem of being an immigrant. But if it's a problem of not having access to resources from your host or from your home country, you would often refer to that as an expat problem. In this particular case, being an immigrant alone, just living in a new country, 
is not enough to really give you the scope of advantages we're talking about, not under normal circumstances. But being an expat, someone who has intentionally decided to leave their home country and live as a citizen of the world abroad from the place that they grew up in or have their initial passport from generally means that you do have these flexibilities. So that perspective is an important one. All of this is not to say that you want to be living your life with the expectation that you're just going to pack up and leave again anytime something is to, to your liking. Of course, you have that option and that's part of the power of being an expat, but more importantly, it's knowing that you have that protection. Immigrants who come to the United States, often spending all the money that they have to get to the United States, are immigrants, not expats. They are hoping in many cases to return home to their home country at some point in their lives. They are there because they're looking for work or whatever, and they are often trapped to some degree. Maybe they can return home, maybe they can't, but they probably can't just go on to another country. But as an expat, we assume we have the power to go on to as many countries as we need to. That power is significant. So when you're looking at that kind of life, it's important to know that you have those options, not that it's important that you leverage them just for eliminating the fear of moving to a new country. It can be very important to understand that the act of moving to a new country gives you the power to keep moving to more and more countries. Now, of course, Absolutely. By not moving to a new country, if you're an American, as an example, or Canadian, just knowing that you could move to Nicaragua at the drop of a hat is power in and of itself. It makes it more comfortable living in Canada, knowing that there's nothing that stops you from moving on to another country. However, it has been expressed to me by both Americans and Canadians that there is some, I don't know how much, I don't know how founded, I don't know how realistic, but people have a fear that their country may shut the borders and disallow migration abroad. Now, this varies as to how it is portrayed and what mechanisms would be used to do this, and I'm certainly not saying that I think this is actually going to happen, but that that fear exists is a very real thing. Once you are an expat, you really don't have that fear anymore. You are not in a country that can lock you in in any reasonable way. You have the right to leave that country. So, having that power of being a citizen of the world, an expat in that way, really means that you are free of many of the controls of government. Of course, you are still under the laws of whatever country is hosting you, that should go without saying, but that you have a freedom to choose the politics under which those laws are going to be is extreme and something that people really don't think about. It's so common because we grow up in a single country, in the confines of that country, that when we move or look at moving to a new one, we often think of ourselves as confined by that country in the same way that we thought of ourselves as confined growing up. But that is not the case under normal circumstances. You have the, all these countries to choose from, and over time, for example, today is a great example day of this. There's a major potential political change going on in France. People who are living in France uh, as expats under one uh, set of circumstances may see a change that happens there. We have no reason to anticipate a problem by any stretch. It's just an example of a place that's going through a lot of political instability just this week. And it's worth noting that if you were there and you had a sudden fear that the change of the anticipated change of government was going to somehow negatively impact you in such a way that it make you wish you weren't living there? Are they going to close the borders? Of course not. Are they going to stop migration? Absolutely not. Are they going to somehow put citizens at risk? No, of course not. None of that is going to happen. But if there was a tuning, maybe they're going to make baguettes a little bit more expensive and that's what you live on and you no longer want to live in a place with such expensive baguettes. Okay, so you want to move on from France. Totally understand. So you want to look at an Italy, a Spain, a Portugal. Portugal is another great example. They just changed some of their visas, so a lot of people who were thinking that that was a place that they wanted to be long-term suddenly may not be, maybe not even be an option, let alone the place that they want to be. Popular opinion has shifted to some degree. So you're in one of these countries, these things happen, you are not trapped. You simply have the ability to say, okay, I'm just gonna ride out my lease or give up my lease, take a, get rid of my apartment, hop in a car, take a train, take a taxi, get a shuttle, go to the neighboring country, whether it's Honduras, or Italy, doesn't matter, and start again, right? Rent a new place, do it again. Go to Costa Rica from here. You have so many options. You have the whole world as your option, so you shouldn't feel trapped. You should never feel fear of what will maybe happen or what could happen by living abroad because you have so much power, so much freedom at a world level to move between governments, to move between countries that things that people fear living in their home country, 
And it doesn't matter what home country you're from. I'm from the United States, so that's my home country. If you're from Canada, you have a fear there. Everybody has certain fears from their passport holding country. It is the nature of it being the country that holds your citizenship. Once you get away from that and you have the freedom to choose any country in the world that will accept you, which for most people is most countries, even if some are difficult, require a lot of visas, you generally can get in. Some places are super easy, some places are super hard. Those who are able to expat are often able to expat again trivially. So adding that to your thought process, that if anything was to go wrong, it could be weather related, it could be housing related, it could be cost of living related, it could be politically related, that there's been a huge change of laws and the way that you have to live in that country is different. Any of those things, they don't matter significantly because you have the freedom and the power of the expat. You have the power to choose a new location and change the set of circumstances that you're under at any time to make them be what makes sense for you. That is a really big power and normal people will never experience it. And most expats will never actually realize that they have this power and think of themselves in that way. But it really does solve so many of the potential fears that people have about moving abroad. And not to mention, of course, that most people can simply choose not to be expats anymore and return to their home country. Obviously, that is normally a perfectly fine thing to do. You're not locked into being an expat, but even if you were, you have so many options around the world, so many great places that you could go and investigate and possibly choose that being able to select from them itself, being able to switch which one you choose over time is so powerful, so just enabling to being able to live a better life and to mentally release so much of the stress knowing that yes, it may be an inconvenience. Yes, you may have to change things that you didn't wanna change, but that you're not trapped you're not going to be trapped. You don't have to ever have that thought process. Your thought can always be, I have the freedom and power to move more or less wherever I want. And that's one of the things, living in Nicaragua, we see people who every day wish they could move somewhere. They don't have that power, whether it's because of their income or because of their visas or, and passports uh, or whatever, they just don't have that freedom to go be an expat in that way. One of the benefits of being an expat is that freedom, and that is something that I wish everyone in the world had. I wish that it was just universal, but it's not. But you, my audience, almost universally have that, and when you're looking at possibly becoming an expat, it generally means that that power is something you have, and that alone should be a massive motivating factor as to why, seriously considering, being an active expat should make sense. Thanks for joining me, like and subscribe. Questions, comments, get down below, of course. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. As always, share on social media, tell a friend about the show, and I will see all of you tomorrow. And if you would be so kind, click on one of the videos on the screen. And if you don't see one or don't like one, scroll on the side and pick one of the videos that YouTube recommends for you.